<laughs> you gotta put Uno on the pedestal. Come on. Starting with all the important stuff, kid. We've um, been started. This is 10 yeah. minutes in already. 2.45 according to this, but that's a big zero zero on my brain. Cool. Um, hell yeah. Let's do it for real this time. Episode 29. Episode 29. I've, I've, so it's all about Uno. All about who knows, yes. Yeah. We are here talking about our favorite restaurants today. Uh, I've been trying to intro guests, so I'm determined to try starting. That's crazy. So my guy, <laughs> guitarist of Half-Hearted, and the worst cornhole partner I've ever had in my whole That's, life, dude. We don't talk about that. It was brutal yesterday. So we had a big barbecue yesterday, which makes it hilarious to try and do a podcast today, as we both drank too much yesterday and hung out with everyone yesterday. But here we are, dude. We're going to make it happen. We're going to yes, figure sir. it out. <laughs> it's going to go great, dude. No problem at all. Um Oh, I forgot. I keep forgetting the cats are down here. I keep seeing you bend over. Uh, so that's the other thing is, yeah, it's hot as hell down here. And last episode I did with values, I was sweating. We were all sweating so much. And I felt so bad. Yeah. So I'm trying to cool it down. We'll solve that problem in the future. But for now, we got a music video to talk about or a song to talk True. about first. No, we have Cornhole to talk about first. <laughs> cornhole to talk about. Yeah. So I picked you and you said you were trash and I believed you. I, knew. I said it. I warned you. So that's all that matters. And then we beat Dan and Ryan's ass. And then we oh, won yeah, the Oh, yeah, we won. Game. Yeah, we beat ass. We, we won the <laughs> wiffle ball. <laughs> We won with ball single-handedly. I lost beer pong though. Once with Sean though. That's because I was kidding. There, I was just doing opposites. Uh oh. Now nah, well, we scraped beer pong. No, nah, you're terrible, play. dude. No, shut the fuck up. Uh, you don't joke about that. It wasn't even beer. It was water pong. I mean, that's. You know how many places I've been? I don't. I haven't been anywhere where anyone played beer pong with actual beer. Yeah, but that's that, like not a thing. I don't we're talking, know if that is a thing that happens anymore. When we're talking about winning streaks, though, it does matter. I'm just really I left my cheat sheet on the table here. That's crazy. Um, this is also crazy. Yo, that's this sick. is just the wildest. I love wildest this. thing of all time here. I um, love that. <laughs> <laughs> No, dude. Beer pong matters because in like the terms of a win streak, by the tenth game, it's way more impressive to keep winning. If you oh, have absolutely. To drink the beer. I've never played beer pong that good in my no. life till yesterday. Me and Sean were just like on like a I don't even know. We were in like a trance. <laughs> like, did we we lost a couple times? Yeah, but we won like fifteen times or yeah. something stupid. Like thirteen times. I don't remember. We yeah. lost count. I mean, as you do. That adds up. Yeah, cornhole. <laughs> that math math. Wiffle ball. You know. Good it times, homies all around. We didn't play with ball, though, so that doesn't count. We just, we did. We just sidelined. We talked we the, more shit than anyone else We talked field. shit. That's Absolutely. the best thing. That's Absolutely. What I have to do. We sat there and were supportive in spirit. Mm -hmm. And had more fun than everyone else. We like, had to run 100%. around and get sweaty and like try. 100%. Like, that, was, that was not needed at yeah, all. Yeah, nope. I couldn't have physically done that. <laughs> I would have collapsed <laughs> in, in my state yesterday. Yeah, dude. We had our seats on the Green Monster, a little <laughs> outfield <laughs> perch. Um Music videos, dude. Yeah. We're going to talk about this whether you want to or not. We're going to talk fine. about half hour stuff. about it. Uh, hell yeah. Make sure everything's recorded before we dive into stuff for real. But yeah, July 13th, Insatiable comes out. So we're recording this on Sunday, so four days from now. Uh, but yes. I wanted to start with like the early part of this journey. So I feel like with you guys, all right, know for a fact that your songs are always changing until the last minute. And then until the day the video releases, I'm still like liable to get hey, an updated mix dawn. coming. <laughs> Allegedly. This one's dawn. I've heard that before. The other one. Um, it's not done, but... I, it's always a thing, but it's like, I think that's a, a testament to your guys' determination to get things right and just to, yeah, make it the right expression of yeah. you guys. But that means that this process, yeah, I'm seeing the last 1% of this process. Where does this thing start? How long ago does Insatiable start uh, kind of coming into existence? Is it an old idea? Is it get polished up? Like, yeah, where does this thing start? I think it's like, um, what is it now? July. So, I mean, it was either end of last year or like early, early this year. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think. Um, probably end of last year. Um, and some songs are like, for like the pandemic at least, like when we were writing all through that, like Sean would usually start the song. Mm -hmm. He would have an idea, whether it's, I don't know, like a loop or something he found and just wrote vocals over. And then obviously we can't, you know, use the loop. He would just, he would just, you know, Search the internet, find something cool, be like, all right, I want to write some stuff over this. What a write a course or whatever. And then we that would just be our starting point, and then we'd just go crazy. What kind of loop is it? Is it like a does it sound like half-hearted music or is it like a that was more for like the popular like, shit? Yeah, okay. Like so in like writing that way for like that style of music works really, really well for us at least. Mm -hmm. Um so now that we're like not really doing that, we're kind of just doing like heavier shit again. Mm -hmm. Um it's been a mix. Like sometimes he still starts it. He'll just have a cool idea or he'll have like a synth thing that he'll make and mm -hmm. he'll have a verse or a chorus. And then I come in and we just mess around and, you know, fuck around for a couple of days and figure it out. So uh, this, song this one, this one was different because I started this one. 
Like, Interesting. Okay. Which I used to start all of them like a long time ago, and then we stopped. Mm -hmm. um, this one I started. I'm trying to think. I think there's one other one that I started too, in the shower, which happens very occasionally. But like just the guitar riff. It's only your happened brain. two or three times, but whenever I have an idea in the shower, it gets used. That's the that's the, like the meme. Interesting. Like sometimes I'll wake up and I'll have a weird dream, mm -hmm. and I'll try to do it, and that never works. But the shower ones, I don't know why. It's something about the shower works what that is interesting um, that we all have i think that's universal that like good ideas happen in the shower and i don't quite know yeah. why that it, like that's something to be said about relaxing and soothing and we let our brain like wander i guess yeah but even then it's the like, fog, yeah. like the fog the fog um like chorus lead in that song was a shower one is that where the name comes from too yes that's actually funny. <laughs> it doesn't but okay we're gonna say it does that's funny uh that one was in the shower, and then, fuck, uh, Breathing Pattern on our album was mm -hmm. also in the shower. And they both kind of sound, like, the parts are kind of the same. Mm -hmm. The songs sound drastically different, but just the specific part that I wrote in the shower yeah. in both of those songs is kind of similar, so that's kind of funny. So maybe that's a thing, too. I don't know. And I started with the, just the guitar lead, and then you voice memo that like do you go yeah, guitar? Just literally go voice memo that and then bring it to sean and then do you finish the shower do you like have to stop the shower yelling no but i will like i hate <laughs> honestly fucking hate when it happens Yo. because i will have to like like let's say it happens in that first 50 percent of my shower and i'm a like <laughs> notoriously slow shower okay. like i just like daydream and like can't yep. focus and just like lie underwater and yep. think about life so up. i'll just be in there for like fucking 20 minutes yeah um so if I think of it five minutes in, I'm pissed because then it's 15 minutes of me being like, I can't lose this. And I'm just in my either in my head or like mm -hmm. humming it. I'm just like, all right, all right, all right, cool, cool, cool. Over and over and over yep. again until it's like ingrained. And then I get out of the shower, drop real quick, and then I voice memo it. And then I can relax. That's funny. I, I have the same thing with yeah, showering specifically. And I think that's also why I end up listening to so much like bad rap music. Is because like what I'm working on all None day of it's bad. is... <laughs> Depending who you ask. Everyone else at the party would say it was bad, but you and I are on the same page yeah, there. they're whack. Um, but, like, I think when I'm working on, like, metal stuff all day, it's like if I go listen to that in the car, like, that pollutes my brain. And somehow by going and listening to, like, rap, it allows my brain to, like, stay in this metal. Yeah, because like, I feel like that you idea probably conversation. work on rock metal the most. Mm -hmm. Same with me, like, with my shit. Like, yep. whenever I, you know, I'll, I'll go in phases. Like, honestly, for a couple of years, like, I've never not like metal like even when we were mm -hmm. doing the pop music shit like i still love yeah. heavy stuff but like i don't know sometimes you just need a break you just need a little break yeah like right now i'm super into heavy music again at, the, at this moment um but you know six months ago it was like god i don't want to hear a fucking breakdown ever again what'd you listen to on the way here uh better lovers Better Lovers. That new band that, like, every time I die. Uh, okay, Dillinger, I'll check them out. Dillinger I'm Escape. unfamiliar with it, but I will. Combo band. It's fucking sick. Hell yeah. That's what I listen to on the way here. This gizmo has Bluetooth. So there's a world where I just pull out my phone right now and go, cool, let's listen to it right now. That's cool. I don't think that's exactly what's going to happen. That's weird. We just, like, make eye contact listening to, like, that'd be breakdowns. Funny. Oh, yeah, you don't have headphones on. So, so just yeah, it's just, to you, it it's just you. you listening to it and me, like, <laughs> that should be, you know how, like, reaction videos got, like, real big? <laughs> sure. That should be, like, a new, like, format. In person reaction like, videos? No, but it's still filmed. Okay. It's like this, right? You're filming okay. and you're listening to it, and I have a mic. Like, it's ex this exact setup, okay. except you have a screen here that I can't see, and you're watching and listening to the song and reacting to it, and I can't hear it. And I just have to make commentary about your reaction. So it's like a reaction video of me reacting to you reacting to the video. That could not have been a shower. And that idea. is how There's it no was not. Way. That was a that was a me at two thirty p.m. on Sunday idea. <laughs> two fifteen. Two close enough. Um, <laughs> God. No. What were we uh, talking about? The song starts. So the song starts with like the shower riff, and you send it to Sean. How does it like build out from there? So it's well, like, this one like, wasn't a shower song. My bad. Okay. Insatiable was not a shower song. Insatiable was just a random like, I don't know me in my room song like okay. one part of it one or two parts we had um then i went to sean's do you remember what those parts were like uh, where those, like the chorus of verse the chorus sense like of where it the chorus rhythm okay and uh th that like we got a guest vocalist on this i can hear yo, him here in the headphones up, dude uh the chorus rhythm and the like the first riff after the first chorus okay once it's out people will yeah, be yeah, able yeah. to know. It's um, interesting. Those are both like 
small and subtle segments. I was expecting like more prominent pieces or something. I feel like yeah, like that that one riff is only in for that one part. I mean, the chorus rhythm is like you know that's in a, in the song yeah. a lot. I don't even play it though because it's like I write leads and mm-hmm. do all that shit. But like all the I don't know. Whenever I write something at home, that's a lie. Actually, I'm not gonna say that. I was gonna say I like usually think of cooler shit in the studio, which does happen a lot of times. But then every once in a while, like Voodoo, the first two riffs in that song, which are like in my opinion, like the coolest parts of that song are just me at home riffs. And I was like, yo, I haven't wrote anything this good by myself in a minute. Cause usually I have to go to Sean's and be there and we're just hanging and like our studio is really cool now. And like, it looks sick. Mm -hmm. And whenever I'm in there, I'm just like, oh, this is cool. Mm -hmm. And if I'm in a good mood, I just will write cool shit. He just puts shit on loop. He'll leave the room. He'll just, he'll go eat. He'll go eat dinner. I'll just be down there by myself, and then I'll have to call him back down and be like, "Yo, we we like we got it. That's funny. Let's do it." How long are you down there for? Uh, it depends. I mean, I'll go over. Like, we'll do a song in a day. Mm-hmm. Like, it doesn't really. Like, it rarely takes us more than a day. Now, honestly, like, I don't know. I hope that just keeps happening. Like, we honestly, we took a little break mm-hmm. just because all the new songs we're sitting on. Like, we just want to get those done and out. Cause we, you know, we put out a single every, you know, two, three months, but I want to just like get them out. Yeah. I want to, you know, we don't need any more. We have a lot right <laughs> now. I need a break from writing shit. And like a lot of times too, we'll, we'll get sidetracked with new songs when the songs that were, are done aren't out yet. And it's like, dude, I want to like get these out. I want to focus on this. I want to mix these, get them like finalized. But a lot of times we'll have like, like we had, you know, voodoo and the fog and those done then i go in and we write two more songs and we're like yo these ones are really cool let's let's do these and then we're like we can't forget about these we need to get them done we need Mm -hmm. to you know we need to get them out uh that's interesting i was thinking about that with videos of like by the time the video comes out i've so far moved on to the next video that's hard for me to like celebrate this what's interesting is like in the music context is like when the album comes out you're the primary person who has to promote it and you've also already moved on and it's something interesting i don't have to listen to it while i promote it I guess so. You have to listen to it when you make the video, or maybe you don't. Um, I don't know. I, I do. At least but like, for most of it, it's a. Uh, I've mentally moved on from that project. Like, I'm just not mentally interested in like yeah. like promoting it. It almost feels like a task to be done. I I used to, and I don't anymore. Maybe maybe it's just me being like not like a you know, eighteen year old anymore. Yeah. But like we used to get music videos back, and I would watch them ten times a day for like the whole month leading up to the release. And then even once it was out, I would still watch it a lot. Mm -hmm. And now I get it back and I watch it as little as I can on purpose. Yeah. Like I'll watch it. We got to make sure it's still, you know, we have little edits here and there Mm -hmm. or or the thing we're not going to talk about. And, uh, (laughs) uh, you know, we'll have things like that where I have to watch the video and be like, okay, cool. I I like this part. I don't like this part, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, you know, now I'll just kind of leave it. Once uh, once that's done, like I have to upload it. Like I haven't uploaded it in yet. I'm gonna do it like today or tomorrow. <laughs> um, but I'll watch it like once it's uploaded. Make sure it came out good. Make sure the quality is all good on YouTube and stuff. And then I'll watch it again on release day. And then once it's out, then I'll be like, all right, this came out cool. Like I'm gonna watch this a bunch of times. It's out. Interesting. I can celebrate it. Like the other, like we've done. We're not spoiling anything. We did more videos too. There's another one. And I haven't watched that one really in Mm -hmm. a couple, like I watched it a few times when you sent it. And then I was like getting mad, like just myself annoyed because there's a newer version of the song Mm -hmm. that like, I just forgot to send you. And now there, since then there's been fucking five more new versions because we're not done with it yet. But, uh, it's like, just kept pissing me off. Cause I was like, fuck this video is like really (laughs) sick, but I don't want to listen to this old mix. It like annoys me. Yep. So I don't want to ruin it for myself, so I haven't watched it. You know what's funny is that my brain works the opposite where I like the old mix because I'm used to it. And when I get the new mix, it like muddies the water. And it's like it doesn't really matter to me when it's all said and done. So like in that scenario, I think I do have an updated mix that I forgot to swap in because one of those where I was just working with the old one because it was comfortable yeah, to me. Yeah. And then when I get the new one in the middle, it's like, nah, I'll just change it when yeah. it's all said and done. Um, but it's interesting that we're kind of on opposite sides there. But I'm laughing that you're going to start watching videos muted, which is such a funny thing <laughs> to like get your music video back and mute the music. I never tried that before. Um, 
I've heard people watch movies like that, and I don't. It's, That's fucking weird. It seems like a film nerd thing, but yeah, it's, no, uh, I'm good. The argument is that like a, a movie or any piece of video is fifty fifty, right? It's half audio and half video. Yeah. So you watch each piece of it independently, and then I get bring that. It all back I get it. I just like couldn't do that. I don't know. Not I bet for me. I bet you would. I bet it would acclimate to it. I had a off-color joke there. I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out where the line is here on, on no, public there's record. There's no lines. Uh, unfortunately, it does have to be. Um, the song starts a couple months ago. It starts with you're in couple the bedroom. Months like fucking six months ago. Six you, months. Six months, months, months ago. Eight months. I don't uh, know. It starts the last time you were on the podcast. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Give or take. Every six months we do this. Uh, hell yeah. We gotta it's make like that a, a tradition. It's like a little ritual. Um, when how does it like? How do you guys build out songs in there? So it starts with this idea. Is it then going to Sean and from there it just kind of catches fire? Is there a normal next step of like we have a, a guitar melody? Should we start with building out a drum line and then building up from there? Or like We'll do it part by part for sure. Okay. So we'll get like, I don't know, a riff or the chorus or whatever. And then we'll do that whole part usually so we'll i'll have the guitar we'll record the guitar we'll write fucking demo drums to that part we'll write demo bass to that part i'll try to write like a lead over that part or something we'll do synth or mm -hmm. ah no that we do that that's the one thing we kind of leave for after actually unless we randomly think of something cool mm -hmm. and then we'll just go part by part like i'll just have like i'll know what key the song's in and we just have the tempo of it and then it's just literally me like getting drunk and and fucking around with you know, just to the click or like looping, like looping the second, like let's say we have a chorus, right? We'll just loop the end of the chorus into clicks for a long time and then loop it back so I can think of something cool that could come after that that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, you guys are so spoiled or so fortunate to be able to do it all in-house and have Sean, like if you were going oh, to somewhere yeah, else's studio, not, that can never happen. I would have quit music already if that wasn't Is there, the case because uh, I can't, I don't want to fucking, uh, I can't deal with that. Like, there must be I love being able to just change things. My bad, I didn't mean to cut you off. I love being able to just change things whenever we want. We do nothing. Mm -hmm. We make no compromises. And we just do it, and it sounds good. And at least, I don't know, I think it sounds good. But In the musical world, and I, I think maybe Billie Eilish is an example of this, yeah. of like someone who starts in house. But there's a line where you have to go out, right? Like I mean, they still send, they do everything themselves, I'm pretty sure. But they like I don't think they mix it. Maybe I'm wrong. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Would you? Is I'm sure they still send it out to some that? billionaire fucking mixer that's mixed like every, you know. Sean knows the people's names. I don't know the people's names. Me neither, you know, yeah. Whoever mixes like top 40 songs and like, you know, big, big people, I'm sure that they're not just like, hey, mix this tonight in my bedroom, put it out on the radio. It's going to get a billion streams tomorrow. Like, I'm sure, you know, they have their normal people that they send it to and. Is there a world where you'd be comfortable letting someone else mix and master? Like, is it the writing part that you would, like, be terrified to ever do in the studio? Or is it, like, the whole nine Oh, yards? I'm not terrified. I, I'm not terrified of anything. It's literally just a money thing. Okay. I, I mean, if if we... Well, if I wasn't confident in what we were doing, mm -hmm. like, I know Sean's good, and I know that I can hear things, and I know that we can... Everything we put out, at least... Like, in the beginning, when we first started doing it, like, I look back at, like, the, the our album mix, and I mm -hmm. look back at, like a couple older things from like a few years ago. And I'm like, this isn't bad. Like I remember putting stuff out and people finding out we did it ourselves and them being like, yo, this is like, I wouldn't have guessed that you did this yourself. This is really sick. Yeah. But now I look back because, you know, people don't, a normal person doesn't listen to a song and go, ah, uh, the, you know, uh, you know, there's too many, just too many high frequencies in the guitars. You know, mm -hmm. I don't like the snare. I don't, yeah. you know, the bass is too loud. I don't, I don't know. Or whatever. Most people don't listen to songs like that. Like, you just hear the song, and they just take it for what it is, and they're just like, cool. That's uh, me, yeah. Yeah. Uh, me, it's like, shit, I thought this was really sick, and then now we've done things in the past few years that are way sicker, and now, like, the the line is, like, if I have a song that comes, like, if, if a band I like puts out a song and I really like the mix, like, our mix has to be at least as good as that, like, Different, like all mixes are different. You don't want to sound exactly the same as someone else, but just like comparable in terms of like how loud it is, like how certain parts hit, like levels, like tones, you know? There's just so much that goes into it. Like I just want shit to be sick, so. I feel like even like you're looking back, like I think three years ago, I think the album's like 2020, right? Twenty. It's like pandemic, Yeah, right? but we did most of it. 
um, in 2019 too. So it was like, so I feel like even if you had gone yeah. out to a studio and get it done, I feel like four years after that, you would still look back and go, ah, oh, that mix was kind of stinky. Yeah. I mean, there's I things like that we've recorded like, with other people that yeah. I'm still like that too. Love everyone that we've recorded with, but like, just like, I don't know, time passes and you're like, shit, you just change your mind. Things grow. Yeah. Yeah. And it's fine. Yeah. I don't think, I don't think anything we've ever put out was straight up like bad. It wouldn't have made it out. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. Like, I don't think anything like is unlistenable. Yeah. Because I've definitely worked with some people send me things, and I'm just like, dude, I've tried to be nice to everybody, but mm -hmm. it's like, dude, who mixed? Like, who mixed this? This sounds like you're underwater. Mm -hmm. Like, this is crazy. Yeah. Um, so as long as we don't do that and we keep getting better, yeah, cool, awesome, love it. Uh, how do you uh, – we've both worked with a lot of songs, and so that means by nature that half of the songs we – you know. We like some of them more than others, and that's always going to be true. Uh, and that doesn't mean that the songs we disliked, we worked less hard on. It's just, yeah, we have musical tastes. And I think for me, I've always accepted that, like, whenever I'm working on the song, for those two or three weeks, it is my favorite song ever. Like, it, it has to be. It has no other option. Uh, and then that's after crazy. those two or three weeks, I can move on from that. But, like, in those two weeks, I find myself, like, convincing myself to fall in love with it, but also genuinely falling in love with it because you just end up listening to it so much that all Yeah, the, you know it. I don't you know, know it There's inside a, and out. Yeah, and I connect with a person who wrote it, and I try and think of what were they thinking when this came out, and how do I make that a thing? Yeah, it's uh, so hairy. Yeah, dude, they're, <laughs> Every they're time wild. I met him, I'm just like, my whole hand is hair. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, they're a nightmare to vacuum after, but they get the job done. Yeah. Um, but we've worked with so many people, and so like, I think that, yeah, at first it was like I would get the song that didn't wasn't my favorite song in the universe, and it was like, oh, fuck, dude. Like, how am I going to do this? Yeah. And now it's like, I feel like I can get just about anything and roll with it, because it's like, yeah. Yeah, I make it work. I don't care what the thing is. I care about the person who did it, and as long as I can connect with whatever you were aiming yeah. for, like, who cares where you ended up? Is that similar with advertising? Like, I don't know how involved you are, like, with the the actual three minutes of audio versus all the other stuff. I'm involved done. with it for, like, an hour, because I have to, like, most bands, <clears throat> most bands don't have, like, a lot of clips like they'll sometimes mm -hmm. have one like that the, the, they're like director sent them like mm -hmm. here's like a social media clip to post when it, it comes out mm -hmm. um i like to test a lot of stuff so i'll end up making you know four or five different clips of the song so that means i have to go and fucking listen i don't i, I just literally use iMovie and like cap cut and like if it ain't broke don't fix it like yep. it's simple stuff but it works like if the video's done well then me using iMovie is not gonna affect it yeah yeah. Like, you know, just because I don't have a crazy mm -hmm. editing skills. I could I could cut a video. I could cut 20 seconds of a video yeah. and know where to start it and fade it out. And that's really all I need. And, like, mm -hmm. format it so it, like, looks nice on the internet. And That's how I treat your audio, basically. Of yeah. Like, I don't need to touch yeah, it. Yeah, it's just, like, put plop it in, it in yeah. boom, you're good. Like, yeah. that was our shit to worry about, not yours. Yeah, yep. Um, but, yeah, I mean, other than that, like, it's really just, like, I still try to you know i'm i'm way busier now like every time i come on this podcast i feel like i'm busier than i was it's fun yeah. six months ago which is sick that's awesome yeah um so i will you know uh, i i'm still not picky i don't think i still take like 90 percent of the stuff that comes to me but now every once in a while like honestly like if someone's just i don't even care if this goes out there if someone if you're just like annoying <laughs> and yep. or either you're annoying and or your song is just like like there's a there's a limit. Like yeah. I'll work yeah, yeah, with yeah. a song even if I don't like it. I've been proved wrong many times. Mm -hmm. There have been songs where p that people have sent me that I honestly personally I'm like, dude, I don't think this is good. Like almost objectively. Like even mm -hmm. like sometimes I can hear something and be like, I don't like it, but I can understand why other people like it. I get sent some shit sometimes that I don't know how people like it. Just that's me. Mm -hmm. And so I've almost said no to things before or just like you know chosen like you know if three bands are hitting me up and i can only fit in two i'll be like oh shit well hey yo sorry i'm like too busy today maybe we do this next week or or whatever and there's been times where you know i'll do something that i really think is bad and it just does really well mm -hmm. and it, like the band is so stoked and then i'm just like i'm very happy I'm stoked i'm happy i don't know how i ran into the same cool. issue when I was photographing shows, and it was mostly from photographing shows of like, and it was one of the reasons I kind of phased out of that largely, of like, I felt like the the photos I took were only as good as the person they were of. 
Uh, and so it was this thing of like, if I take a photo of Pierce the Veil, it's going to do great. If I take yeah. a photo of my favorite local band, it's going to do bad. It doesn't matter where they, like, doesn't oh, matter Oh, for anything. like posting. Yeah. Oh, It yeah, doesn't yeah, matter yeah. anything about the quality yeah. of the work. It doesn't matter anything what I do. They could switch venues. They could, like, generally yeah. the better bands and the bigger venue. And, like, yeah, that it's got helps, nicer but, like, lighting, too. And but even like then, that. like, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. You can, yeah, your picture of Vic Fuentes is going to do way better than the pic of fucking me. Yeah. Like, that's not, uh, that's not comparable. And that was frustrating to me as I was shooting because it was like, yeah, you're kind of shooting the shooting the roster of six bands, and it's like, there's one band on here that's just gonna do well yeah. socially. I feel you. And the advice I got was like, hey, don't un- it was don't underestimate the audience that you're not a part of. Don't underestimate the size of an audience that you're not a part yeah, of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's kind of the same point of your saying of like, yeah, you've taken songs. And it's like I don't believe in this, but you do, and let's see if it works. And it exactly, takes off and you're yeah. wrong. Uh, and it's always struck me as like. I mean, there's a, also a lot of times where I'm right too, and it doesn't do good. Of course. And then I get stressed out because then I'm like, it's not like with what I do. It's not like I do it. Like, like you make a music video, right? That's your job. You make the video. You spend time on the video. Obviously, you edit it. And then you send it to the band, and then that's kind of it. Yeah. And then people like me come in. Yeah, my job and, is not and, to get views. And, or, my job is to yeah. make a, a good art. Yeah. yeah. You make the art, and you send it off, and you're good. Yeah. Me, it's like they're coming to me with that art, and I sometimes have to work for six months on that art. Mm-hmm. It just Sometimes it's a month. Sometimes it's two months. Sometimes it's a fucking year. Like, yeah. it just happens. Usually, Listen, usually the ones that make it, six months to a year are things that I actually am like, this is cool. Yeah. I like this. Um, but Hey, like if I don't like something, it, it's kind of like if someone sends me sh- stuff and I'm like, I don't like this. Do I want to invest myself for a month mm-hmm. in this? And usually I just do. Cause yeah. I just need to, but I, I like to put in a parallel of like any other job. If we were teachers, Whatever the first that five years of teaching me. would be, would be like the worst classes in the worst school system. Yeah. Like it kind of has to start there. And I, I like that parallel in my brain. It's comforting. Like, yeah, every song can't be my favorite song, but that's kind of what would it be in any job. Every, yeah. like, if we were, we're kind of spoiled and privileged to think of like, we can choose our clients. And it's like, well, hopefully, hopefully one day that's yeah. the thing. <laughs> but I've, the moment, I've thought yeah. about that before. Like, if you're a teacher, if you're like an elementary school teacher mm-hmm. and you get a new class every year, like, like, what if your class sucks? Uh, yeah. And you're just stuck with that class for a year. Yep. Like, that sucks. And, like, what if yeah. your class the year before was, like, really sick and, like, everyone was cool and, like, nice? Yeah. Like, all the little kids were like, oh, like, that. No, one was, no one was a meanie. And then you get a fucking asshole kid in the next one. There's And then they're all their asshole friends. Yep. And they're just all in your class and you have to just deal with it. As a as a very experienced camp counselor, I'll tell that's, you that any group of twenty kids is just about the same. There's gonna okay. be like one or two that's wild. It's gonna be one or two that's sweethearts. Cool. There's gonna be a lot of kids in the middle, and definitely there's a scale, a spectrum of terror and a spectrum of angels on yeah, both yeah, sides. Yeah. But like I assume in the course of a classroom, like yeah, I'm sure it happens. But my guess would be that for the most part, it's what you make of it, and if you, yeah, yeah, I I don't know. I think. The more I do music videos, the more I'm like, oh, music videos are the same as everything else. Everything is all the same. Yeah. And to me, in the context of a music video, it's like if I show up prepared, I show up with my plan, I show up with in, in the academic sense, that's the lesson plan, that's mm-hmm. doing the the readings, like so you know what to talk to the students about, whatever. For me, it's, yeah, getting the music video set up, getting the day sheet ready so we know what's going to happen all day and we know that the ideas are going to work. We know the thing is there. It's like, yeah, then that, that day goes easy. That's a great day. Yeah. And my Sometimes. class is good there. Whereas the same thing with the teachers, like if they show up without any of that work done, it's going to be a bad class. Yeah, they're fucked. Like there's nothing done. And I don't know. There's been something comforting of like, yeah, we do weird and crazy jobs, but like they're the same as every other job on some level. Yeah. And some, <laughs> yeah. And some level, unless you're, you know, I don't know, unless you truly have a job where it's like passive income and you don't do fucking shit yeah. somehow. I don't know how any of that works, but yeah. like that's the goal, right? I guess. I mean, hey, cool, sick. I don't know how to do that, but yeah, I wish that'd be cool. One day, dude. I was gonna say sometimes. It's, I mean, sometimes you can be prepared as as, as prepared as you want. And it just sometimes still doesn't. You know. And sometimes, even when you prepare your <laughs> best, you go ahead and make a decision at the last minute that ruins everything. So true. Uh, on the other insatiable note, no, it didn't ruin anything. Uh, it worked out for the better, thankfully. Yeah. Uh, but my yeah, our story here is yeah. On the insatiable video is that we are in the planning of the video and we have. Uh, so there's two things going on in the video. One of them is like a narrative story, uh, and then one of them is band performance story. Yeah, uh, band which we don't do ever too, which um, is another thing. The to narrative know, piece because we never really do that shit. We usually just like yeah, cool visuals and like mm-hmm. I don't know, 
different concepts, but you know, it's usually just the band or, or some weird shit going mm-hmm. on. Like never like actors. Same. And I feel like actors are hard because there's often like a dim- actors are hard to me because we're so used to seeing Hollywood. We've seen so many of the best versions of that that yeah, it feels so, so hard. You can't drop some mid. Can't. Yeah. And the time it takes to create a good storyline is so much more than just showing up in a warehouse and playing the song 10 times. Like the, yeah. the amount of thought that had to go into making all those details work. Uh, and we can get into, oh, fuck it, we'll get into it now and go back to the <laughs> locations after. Uh, the guns part of it is the other huge part of this. Yeah. Um, and I'm forgetting why I brought this up now. Um, my king. Yo. Uh, what a wild time, dude. This is the classic Jay He's Grandel podcast experience. Yeah, this is, this is, just this is my perfect vibe right now. Um, I love chaos. I'm going to scoot him out of here, though. I'm sorry, no. Bobby. Uh, you can go play somewhere <laughs> else. Um, I don't remember why I was segueing there, but whatever. Um, Location. So location starts. We have um, uh, we have a location set, and it was a great location. Like my issue is that it reminded me of the Help Me Find video, the Words. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and the Help Me Find the Words video is one we did, yeah, a year ish ago, something yeah. two years ago. Uh, and it's like this white, beautiful, flowery, bright, sunny place. And like the location we had felt similar to that. Yeah. Which my first thought was like, fuck, I don't want to like step on the same. Like I. As I was writing the treatment, I was like, oh, I'm just writing what we did yeah, two yeah. years ago. This is also, this one was like a different vibe too, like compared to that song. So and that I, was like, my it other made thing. sense, yeah. As I, as I worked more on it, I was like, oh, I'm not just writing the same treatment. It's just like, yeah, it, this, this treatment doesn't fit this song. It doesn't fit what we're doing yeah. here. So then I have a moment of like, fuck, I'm a week before the video. I'm behind schedule. I should have had this done by now and I just haven't because I've been busy with other stuff. And so I call a buddy and I'm like, dude, is there any way? I kind of knew this other location existed. And it's like a, yeah, I know he's a part of like a motorcycle club and they have like a warehouse that he'd sent yeah. pictures of before. And so I text him and it was this weird thing of like texting him while I'm also talking to you guys about the video. And I'm talking to you like, yeah, things are going great. And the next text is like, so can I come see that location for the <laughs> video that I'm shooting? Uh, and so thankfully it all worked out. And then, yeah, it's texting you guys and being like, please trust me on this. And yeah, thankfully it all worked out. Uh, but it was stressful and it was one of those weird of like, uh, the advice that's in my brain is to learn to fail quickly. And it was one yeah. of those of like my, I was really torn on like, yeah, do I change course and say, look, I have this better idea. Let's go with it. Or do I stay on this and be like, no, I'm going to, I'm going to do what I said I was going to do. I'm going to stick true to my word. And I've always believed that my word is all I have. Like as a self-employed person, like mm-hmm. there is no other entity to back me up. Like, Yeah. I mean, if people start to not trust you or people get annoyed by you or people, yeah, I don't know. If people have an experience with you that they fucking hated, yep. then it's like, well, that person's not going to come back to me ever again. And so if a week before every video I say, hey, I know we have this location yeah, lined every, up. If it happens every time, then you're, you're just like, fuck, dude. All these bands are going to stop coming to me. A like, nightmare. Yeah, it would be a disaster. Like, it would be a disaster for me, too. But it would... That wasn't your fault, though. Of, was just, you know. But it was one of those like internal things of like, I can't do this always, so I have to be very sure that I want to do this if yeah. I do it. Uh, and the longer I wait, of course, the harder it gets to make all this thing happen. So thankfully it worked out. But yeah, it was a really, I don't know, it was one of those real moments that I remember in the moment of like wanting to talk about on the podcast of like, I don't know what to do. Like, I think yeah. there's a better plan here, but I think I might piss some people off. And thankfully everyone was kind and understanding and that went great. Um, but yeah, that was a week before the video. Uh, our other conversation here is the guns part. So we have a narrative scene. Uh, and so we bought airsoft guns, mm-hmm. uh, and I painted them. Uh, another quick side story is here is they've been sitting right there for so long. Oh, that's I painted so them funny. right there. Uh, and so like when Nick came <laughs> in, thankfully Nick was aware of what was happening, but when Nick came in, he kind of looked and was like, dude, that's <laughs> why sick. do you have guns laying around? Especially him. That's uh, so funny. Yeah. It was. And there was a couple of people that it happened with. Like, dude, these are for your video. Yeah, thankfully. Thankfully, they were for him. That's so funny. But, dude, it was so funny. And then, yeah, I just kept forgetting they were down here because I would paint them and, like, a week later, come back down and put another coat of paint on. And so I would just bring a new person. They've been to my apartment down here. The first thing is just guns laying around the place, painted everywhere, clearly looking just sus. Um, But we had to put a lot of work into figuring out, like, how do we use guns in a way that we can get the the artistic effect we want, the robbery, the criminal aspect. Yeah, it's like a... But without you know. violating, like, the the YouTube monetization. And I think the the line of our conversation that kept sticking in my brain is, like, we can't make something that we can't promote. Oh, my God, I love this. Uh, like, if we, if we make this video and it can't go anywhere, then we're fucked. Like, we did yeah. all this work for nothing. And so it was a really weird line of, like, we know what we want to do, but we can't do it within the bounds of what should happen in the world. Yeah. Um, from the YouTube marketing standpoint, where are, like, the lines of, like, content so i know we talked about like drug sales we wanted to have like someone passing off drugs outside selling drugs we wanted to have criminals <laughs> robberies 
You can just push him. Yeah, he's fine. No, I'm not trying to push him. Um, but uh, you're so heavy. You're gonna <laughs> Um, but yeah, where are the lines on yeah. YouTube in terms of, I know we went through some of these, but yeah, in terms of, can we sell drugs? Can we replicate? Can I don't know we... what you could do anymore. Okay. Dude, it's like, I don't know. I had a band that had literally a video that's like, it's, it's almost just like, it's just weird art and it's like super dark and just black background and mm -hmm. nothing in it that is offensive in the slightest. Mm -hmm. And it just like, no, can't do it. Sorry. I know when we were planning, you were no talking sense. a lot about like the first 30 seconds of the video or the beginning of the video. Yeah, I mean, sometimes bands will send me stuff and I'm like, God, this is like same shit. Like if there's guns or like, you know, crazy stuff in the video, I'm like, God, they're going to hate this. Like, mm -hmm. I hope this gets through and I hope we can do stuff with it. And I mean, that's just YouTube. If, if that messes up, I just do a bunch of Facebook and Instagram and whatever stuff for it, which is fine. Like I do that anyways for other things. Does that like even out? Like, is, is losing the YouTube a huge hit? It's only a hit for the video, like, kind of. Mm -hmm. Like, Spotify stuff that I do isn't on YouTube. That's all, like, Instagram for the okay. most part. So it's, like, it doesn't really fuck with the song itself. But the video, it's, like, YouTube ads are, like, the best for that. Mm -hmm. So I can still run Facebook stuff, Instagram stuff for it. And it'll, it'll do fine. But either, like, you have to put more money into it or, like, it's kind of up in the air with how that can go. Um it just depends. Is I just it's just annoying whenever it happens, and it's been happening more and more lately for no reason, and it's stupid. And is a, a music knows? video with a hundred thousand views more or less valuable than a song with a hundred thousand streams? Dude, I don't even know anymore. Do you have any sense? Of I how don't. That dude, like there are like there are bands that I work with that have I don't know forty, fifty thousand monthly listeners or more, and I feel like. They don't even they they don't have like a manager or they don't have a team or they don't like they don't tour like they're they're just like chilling with all these fucking listeners and like I know that I know that I'm doing real stuff for them which is you know that's just what I'm doing but I don't know what they did before me I don't know if the, all the listeners are real like oh, I'm pretty good yeah. at like yeah seeing bullshit yeah but sometimes it'll be real and I'm like cool this band has like 50k monthly listeners like that's not insane in the grand scheme of things but like for like a local band like that's fucking sick good for you mm -hmm. but I feel like they won't have like anyone who has their back if that makes sense mm -hmm. and then I'll see these bands that have like literally like a thousand monthly listeners and they have an agent and they have a manager and it's like all the shit and like over time and it's, it's like really just finding people that really believe in what you're doing mm -hmm. um, matters more than like Hey, we just got a song and it hit a hundred thousand streams, which is sick too. Like that, maybe that will getting milestones like that will help you find, you know, if there was someone who wants to work with your band and they're like, Oh, I'm unsure. I'm unsure. You know, I don't know if this is my thing or not. And then they start seeing posts like that, which is like, Oh, this is working. Like things are happening. Like, all right, maybe I will do this then so that could, you know, make an impact. But I don't think necessarily like, it's not as big of a deal as people really make it out to be. Like a mil a million streams is like three thousand five hundred dollars, four thousand dollars maybe. <laughs> yeah. Like that's not <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah. You'd have to get a million streams a month just to like Yeah. You know, that's not even that's for one person to be like, All right, yeah. I could survive off this and I'm not even like living a crazy life. And that's a million streams a month. And that's not the band, the producers, the Yeah, artists, and a band's other, usually like yeah. four or five people. Yep. So then it's like, oh, cool. If, if we wanted to, I know you, you know, there's merch. Hmm. There's merch makes way more money than anything else. But like I'm saying if you wanted to live off of just streaming, like everyone in your one, you'd have to have a hundred percent of your streaming royalties, which is a whole different conversation. Uh two, you need to, you know, if you have four People in your band, you have to be getting like millions and millions and millions and millions of stream streams a month, yeah. which is like not realistic unless you're a big band. Uh, so it's like I don't know. It's it matters, but it also doesn't matter. It kind of just your like your art matters more than anything. And like if you do some cool shit, like there's also like if you're trying to do pop music and you have ten thousand monthly listeners, like no one fucking cares. Like who cares? Yep. You know. Beyonce has fucking 40, 50 million or whatever, mm -hmm. or, or Billie Eilish has 40, 50 million. Like, those are, like, pop stars. You have 10K, like, cool, sick, dude. Fucking yeah. Go play the fucking tavern. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, if 
you're a heavy van and you get 10k and you are like interesting and you have something like i don't know that is just catching people's attention and people are sharing your shit like that is better because it's like all right the ceiling i don't want to say ceiling because that sounds bad but like the ceiling Mm -hmm. is lower and you're you know the community is smaller and you're going to have a higher chance of getting noticed off of that than Mm -hmm. you are if you're like playing super top 40 like i don't know yeah I don't know what I'm trying to say. But. Uh, you, you touched on uh, streaming royalties. Uh, what's like a normal split? I'm assuming you're alluding to like the label takes a percentage of it and you get a percentage I mean, it's of like, it. It's different for everybody. But is it like, is it normally 50-50? Is it normally 90-10 in some favor? Do you have any sense of like what is a, I if don't, you were to sign a lit contract tomorrow, what you might see? Honestly, I that? don't know. I'm not okay. super, I mean, there are contracts where you're you're an artist and you're getting, you are only getting 10%. Okay. There are 50-50 ones too. Then there are ones where it's like, Oh, um, there, dude, I mean, I don't know. There's so many different options. Like there are, there are even contracts where it's like, Hey, yes, you're only getting this percent for now. But then once, once you recoup, you could just have once, like once we recoup, like you can just fucking have it. Cool. Like there's, there's so many different yeah. ways to go about it. Um, gotcha. And I don't really know. I haven't seen enough. And like only from what like friends have told me, cause you know, I have friends that have signed contracts like that and mm-hmm. stuff and you know, from what they've told me, like everyone's told me different things. So I don't really know, honestly. Yeah. Uh, thankfully, I have people in my life that I could ask mm-hmm. and be like, hey, is this good or is this trash? Um, and they will be honest with me. And I would hope that if it was trash, they would be like, yeah, you shouldn't fucking do this. Uh, I don't know how he solved that problem. And I have the same thing in context of music videos of like, no one really know or photos like content creation in general. Like no mm-hmm. one really knows how much each other's charges. We don't really know what goes into it. I don't really know what my peers send the band as the final deliverables. Like there's so many yeah, of these like dude. I mean, hidden dude, secret like, things. There's and Ben. Contracts are a similar thing of like I don't quite know how we solve that problem. Of like my brain is like the only way I solve that problem is getting on here and reading out the the invoice for my music videos. And it's like I, that doesn't benefit do anyone. That, yeah, that's terrible. It's like- like it should be private to a certain degree because I feel I don't like talking about money. Yeah. Like, and it's just I do end up talking about money like a lot in my mm-hmm. life. Yeah. Uh, but I don't like talking about money. I don't really care about you know. Yeah. How much money? Some how, how much money this costs? How much money this costs? How much money this person makes? You know I don't really care. Mm-hmm. Um, it's more so like everyone's different. Everyone's skill set's different. So like just because. You know, someone is charging a grand or two grand for a music video mm-hmm. doesn't mean that they're not better than the guy that's charging ten grand. But uh, it's all different yeah. situations. But in the context of like the in in that example, the ten grand guy can be predatory in that sense because the other people don't know the other guy's only one grand. And in the record, oh, exactly. Contact, and like also you're a, it's like if you have a name behind you too, if like you've done big shit, then like you can get away with charging more and Yeah. Like, I don't know. For me, like for my stuff, I, I I all the time think about raising my rates and, and everything, and I get scared too because I'm like, shit, I don't want to like... Because there are bands yeah. that come to me that I'm really cool with and friends with, but mm-hmm. I know that like, you know, their financial situation isn't the best. So it's like, dude, yeah. I don't want to price out this band that's like yeah, stoked. And none like, of us are in great financial... Like, we're all here. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Exactly. Like, it's, like, we're all just <laughs> existing yeah. and, and yeah. chilling. Like, yeah. I think that's what always gets me. Is like, it's not like a... I always I have that same line of like yeah some of my people aren't in the best and it's like no none like I'm not in the like none of us are like it's not yeah a, you just gotta make uh, it work dude. yeah just like at the end of the day dude though if someone like wants to work you they're gonna like I don't know like when I say I'm raising my rates I'm talking like a hundred dollars I'm not sure. talking like I'm gonna go from double whatever I'm charging now it's like yeah. cool I'm gonna charge like an extra hundred bucks or maybe yeah down the line an extra couple hundred bucks because mm-hmm. like that's all I really need to do um yeah. but even that like sometimes bands come to me and they're literally it's like They'll even give me an amount that they want to spend, and I'll be like, dude, could you squeeze, like, $50 more? Like, mm-hmm. it would just make my life so much easier. I know it seems stupid that it's that little amount of money, but just, like, if you could get another 100 or another 50 bucks, like, that'd be so sick. And most of the time, yeah. it works out. Sometimes yeah. it's like, no, dude, like, we literally only have this amount. Like, like we need to make it work somehow, and I'll have to figure it out. But Yeah, that's a good strategy. I always feel bad because, like, I don't... I also don't want to seem desperate for money. And it's this weird balance of, like, I do need to make more money, but I don't want to be begging for handouts. I don't want to be begging for the last 10% of the paycheck on top because, like, that's not really what this is about. And I've always had the idea, like, this is about staying alive. This is about, like, survival. Yeah. Like, that's the money and 
in any industry, I guess, and particularly in ours, like not in the first 10 years. Like the, the money happens when you can get the 10 and still be going and then you have 10 to 20. Yeah. Make money, right. Yeah. And so in, in my context of money, it's like, yeah, I don't want to nickel and dime you now and create a bad taste that then puts me out of business in five years. So there's oh, some definitely. like balance. Gotta, of, like, yeah, you know, I want to build and build and build and build. And yeah. You know, a, I don't know. I think as soon as you, if you just keep good like relationships with people and people don't hate you and I don't know. Yeah. If if most people if your name comes up and most people are like oh that dude's cool then you're good yeah if your name comes up and most people are like fuck that dude then you're not that's, I don't know it's gonna run out at some point or yep. maybe it doesn't then good for you I don't I don't know uh, that's a great I've always had the line that like every, I work with so many bands that I feel like every time I work with a band they talk shit about another band <laughs> they, like, there's some <laughs> clash somewhere like, uh, they're promoted, they're listen, like a sound guy like it's, sometimes it's valid though sometimes it is but a lot of times it's not and my my line has been like everyone has a bad story about someone. And like I'm sure that like, probably I, yeah. I believe my heart of hearts that I've done good by everyone. I've gone out of my way to go good by everyone. Yeah. But I'm sure there's someone who's Same. not talking nicely about me right now. And I don't know who that person is. I hope I don't yeah. find out. But like mathematically, there must be. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> and I'm always trying to be aware that when I'm with the band and they're talking poorly about the thing, it's like this might just be the one person who thinks they're the asshole. Like they might be a saint, except for this one instance where there's some yeah. weird circumstances. I mean, everyone's like everyone can have a bad day. Yeah. Like um, I don't know. For me, if I have a bad day, I don't like take it out on other people, or yeah. like I try to just keep it to myself as much as possible. But you know, yeah. every once in a while, I'll just like, like I'll be having a bad day. My fucking DMs for people who are lovely people who want to pay me money <laughs> are going fucking crazy. Yep. But I'm having a bad day, and I'm like overwhelmed. <laughs> it's like, oh, I have like yep. a dozen fucking new people that I have to talk to today and I'm not in the mood to talk to people and I just have to like suck it up and just be nice and like, mm -hmm. hey bro, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, it just depends, you know. How I don't do you? like making people hate me, so I Probably. try to not do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, I guess, yeah, then the, the don't hate me, but also I got to stand up for myself and balancing those two things. Yeah. Um, last piece on Insatiable here, Nick and Lily. So we had two actors come in uh, for the narrative piece that we touched on as like an interesting, yeah, new addition. Mm -hmm. uh, why did you choose Nick and Lily? I feel like they were, yeah, you pretty quickly were like, these are the two people who are going to do this role. Yeah, uh, well, I, knew we need, I knew we needed a couple, and I knew that they needed to like not look whack. Yeah, and they're a couple, and they're my friends, and they don't look whack. They crushed. And they it. got they yeah. got a bunch of fits. Yeah. Oh, it was so Lily, much fun. Lily got a bunch of wigs and shit, so I was like, "This is perfect." I was grateful. Did I know if they could act? Honestly, fucking no. I just winged it. Oh, uh, when they got here, I totally forgot about this until this second. When they got here, I was chatting with them, and I was like, "Oh, and Jay mentioned you had acting experience." And like, as it leaves my mouth, oh, like, I didn't say that shit. Their faces <laughs> were so blank, and I was like, "Oh, I'm for sure like that's not true." And I was like, "That's backtrack. so funny." And I think, yeah, that's I, so. Funny. I like I felt bad because there was a moment I assume in their head of like. Oh fuck, we are in over our heads. Like he thinks we're gonna, we know what we're doing. Yeah, um, and they killed it. Though. They crushed it. They were so much they fun to work it. with. It was nice to have people on set who were like so excited to do it. I think we've all yeah. been on set so much that it's refreshing to have someone who's like excited by all this stuff. Yeah, that we've, well, it's different. Like, I see. I don't really know. Like I said, we don't do. We've done like a couple little storyline things in the past, but it's always friends. Like we've never had anyone extra in any of our videos that we didn't like know. Mm -hmm. Um. So I assume it's different if, like, we were, like, you know, hiring someone that we didn't know to come in, and then, you know, if they do a bad job, and it's like, fuck, like, I lost money, and we have a shitty video, and this sucks, and I didn't really like them either as, like, a person. It's, like, so much easier when it's just, like, your boy mm -hmm. or, or whatever, and you're just like, yo, want to come through? I'll, like, buy you sushi, and then yeah. fucking you get to be in a video. And they're, and they're just like, oh, hell yeah. I don't know, like, the tier of actor I've worked. Like, I don't know if it works like a professional actor or actress. Yeah. Uh, but there is something really, they're like models to me, where it's like a good model is hard to take a bad photo of. And it's really like a strange skill set. Like, yeah. it makes no sense to me. I... And good actors are the same thing of like, they're on set and the camera turns on and somehow things just work. And it's so weird to me that I like, it doesn't, I don't. I get that they are very skilled and I can't articulate what the skill set is that they're so excellent at. And it's a really like odd thing to me. Yeah. It's a really strange I mean, they're job. not actors. They just figured it out. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, we, it's not, we weren't doing, you know, there's honestly only one scene in the video where it was like, I was like, all right, he's got to actually does kind of have to like really act on this. Cause mm -hmm. a lot of it's just like, you know, like, like breaking into houses with, with a yeah. fucking gun and like, 
yeah. stealing from cars and which, like driving around. Which is something I've learned the hard way doing music videos. Of I've tried so many times where someone comes up and it's like, we want to tell a breakup story. So it starts with this long fight and then we have this argument and I write this long thing out and it's like, yeah, we can't, like, we can't, it can't do that. And so as I was writing this one, it was like, okay, how do I design something that is easy to succeed in for them and also translates so easily to camera? And yeah, the easy step for me there is like, we yeah. don't need to I tell mean, it's a story. it's pretty simple. We I just, just think, I, it's not the most fucking crazy storyline in the world. Like, yeah. it's, in the grand scheme of things, it's very simple. Like, yeah. I've seen music videos with like crazy complicated storylines, and sometimes they go good, sometimes they go bad. And I'm like, yeah. I don't know what happened, or like, whoa, that was really cool. Yep. Um, this one, it's like, cool. It's like a pretty simple storyline, but even if someone somehow doesn't know what's happening, the video just looks cool. Yeah. So mm. it's like, I don't care. It's like, yeah. Sick, dude. And I appreciate that. And that was definitely something that was my goal going yeah. in. It's like, this is going to live in clips. This is going to live in 30 second clips more than it's going to live in this full, full thing. So, yeah. how do I make sure that those 30 seconds are not lacking without the context of everything else going yeah. on in the video? I think the, tra I think the trailer, um, like, which no one's seen. Well, by the time this comes out, yeah. we'll have the trailer up. I think the trailer, you made it like, this is a good thing, but I think you made it so, like, it's so sick. And I feel like, People are gonna think it's like gonna be some like crazy complicated thing, which is not. Yeah. But who cares? Yeah. It just looks. Um, you sent me that trailer, and I was like, "Yeah, this looks like it's gonna be like a." I remember. This doesn't even look like it's for a music video. This <laughs> looks like a movie fucking trailer. I remember being excited about it, but I don't know what it is right now. So I'm excited to watch it after this and be like, "Yeah, what the hell did I make?" Because I remember like I remember you just finishing did it real it. quick and then like sent it and like forgot about it. That I remember like I remember doing it and being like, "Oh, this is sick," and like I. We had the or I had the idea of like a movie poster uh, or just a movie poster roll. Like how do I roll this out like a movie? Uh, and so I think it follows that train of thought. But yeah, it's like the, yeah. the specific concept there, it came together in like twenty minutes, kind of thing of like it just pulled in five sound effects and was like, oh, okay, here it is, got it. I think that movie poster uh, thing was like the best promo we've ever had, honestly, because I've I'm never had, I've never had like I just posted it up. It did help that it was my birthday. I was making a joke for to Sean the other day. I was like, dude, I just gotta say it's my birthday every time we make a band post. Yeah, because like all my like socials and shit like i'll post i don't know i'll post me i just went on vacation cool all my vacation posts like for me like you know i only have like a thousand followers but like you know, all my vacation posts got mad love i was like dude damn people really like me in the fucking woods mm -hmm. or me at the beach or whatever and then I'll, i would you know in the past it's like cool i'm posting like the artwork for our new new ep or new single it's like yeah dude sick 20 fucking likes yep. fuck you even though I know a bunch of people like my band, it's like, yeah. they're, you know, either Instagram doesn't send it out or people just aren't, you know, it's just artwork mm -hmm. or it's like even promo sometimes or even live photos, like shit will just mm -hmm. flop every once in a while. And I posted that one up and it fucking like got mad, mad people were commenting, hit me. I got texts about that picture. Hell yeah. People texted me they just like, yo, why does that picture you posted go so fucking hard? I was like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It just looks sick. Hell yeah. It's just funny. We didn't we, even give you notes on that. We, we took that in two it. seconds. We took, too. That, we took that in two seconds. We weren't even supposed to take it. Because we had a photographer who was supposed to come and then someone I, forgot to text I, them I, at I all. For, I for gore. <laughs> Poor Adi. Shout out. I saw her like a week or two after that. And she was like, yo, I didn't know what I've happened. I've seen I Adi like, yeah, like four bad. times since that fucking day. <laughs> Dude, you know why I forgot though? It was just the location thing. Yeah. I just, yeah. that fucked me up. It and was I, crazy And it was week. extra money. So I was like. I think part of me assumed like, oh, the, the money that we were going to pay for a photographer is now going to this new location that we weren't yeah. planning on. Yeah. And then also I just forgot. So it I was, was like, crazy. I yeah. was like, yo, Peter, can you take a couple <laughs> pictures of us and we're done? takes 30 seconds. It's just the sickest <laughs> promo cool. picks we've ever had. Uh, to be fair, the advantage is that I'd already shot a music video there. So I already knew how the space worked. Yeah, and I was like, like I can just go find the one frame from half an hour ago that I already yeah, made. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> get a single one of it. Um, hell yeah. yeah, I'm really stoked on how they came out and stoked to share that with the world. Um, we are getting close to our hour. Um, before we get you out of here, I want to touch on the, the management thing. So I know you, is it official partnership with is it SL management, yeah. Scott Lee's management? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what is the, yeah. What is your official job title? What is your role? What are so, you doing there? That's been like a new confusion in my life for, yeah. not for me, but for like other people mm -hmm. because I started doing that. They asked me in like December um, and then I started like actually doing it in January. So it's literally, all it is is just me doing what I was already doing for bands just mm -hmm. on my own, which I still do, mm -hmm. but just for every band 
on the management gotcha. that, that needs me. Like I don't mm-hmm. work for every single band, but like whenever, yeah. like cool, like Body Snatcher had a merch drop this week, so I helped with that. Or like Currents just did a tour and I helped with that. Mm-hmm. Or like Invents going on tour, I'm going to help with that. Like so whenever stuff like that comes up and also just like random shit, like, like last week was our, hey, we need to make sure that every band's website has the, you know, updated tour dates so people fucking can go to the shows and a lot were like not updated so i had to go in and do a bunch of that random stuff it's like cool i went to gramercy to hang out with currents on tour it was like day two of the tour i went like the first couple days and i'm fucking sweating my ass off helping with merch restocks in the middle of the show that i didn't know i was doing but they're just like hey help all hands on like got you all good like so random shit like i don't know um, and then, yeah, like I said before, helping with release stuff and, and ads for that and tour stuff, which is what I'm already doing. So, uh, you mentioned like merch drops that I hadn't heard you say that before. I know it's been like a lot of singles and music videos. Yeah. Uh, merch has it been like, I assume that this branching out, of course, that makes sense that a management company would benefit from having that spread out has it been tough to kind of diversify the things you're working on. Like are songs and music videos still the easiest compared to merch or whatever other weird stuff you have to promote? Uh, not it's, weird, just, but. it's not easy. It's not necessarily easier. It's more. The thing with us is that a lot of, I mean, all of their bands are solid. Yeah. Or I should say all of our bands, so that feels weird. But, like, everyone we work with is, like, really solid. Like, there's some big bands. Like, if I if a random band hits me up and they're, like, a nobody band, not trying to sound mean, but, like, you know, they're a new band and they're trying to sell a bunch of merch, it's not going to go as well. Like, it's just right. merch is different than right. streaming. Streaming, you can throw a song at anybody, even even if the band is small. If someone's like, yo, this sounds sick, they'll listen to it. Mm -hmm. If it's, hey, we just dropped fucking six new merch items on our fancy store, like, go buy some shit. Like, I can do more stuff with that with, you know, Currents or Body Snatcher or we have, like, Kublai Khan, like, Mm -hmm. big bands than, you know, the random band from Idaho Mm -hmm. Yeah. That is just starting out and they need, you know, they're trying to make some money on merch, but they only have 200 followers because you can't really sell. I mean, I shouldn't say you can't, but like it's easier to sell merch to your fans than it yep. is to randoms. Mm-hmm. So in some ways it's easier because it's like these merch drops are pretty straightforward. You're just sending merch to their fans. Mm-hmm. Hey, they have a merch drop. If you didn't see it because Instagram said fuck you and only showed your post to a thousand people, now we're paying so you see it. And so then, mm-hmm. you know. And, it's, and it goes well, you know, whenever it's a big band. I've done it for the smaller bands before, but the the issues we run into are, one, like, not many people on the internet. Like, even even for Half Hearted, we don't fucking sell shit online. We're, so, like, yeah. I don't care about saying that either. Like, we have, so, I, I, I've, it's not like I've sold no merch. Like, we, I've sent merch to fucking Japan. I've sent yeah. merch all over the country. Yeah. But compared to, like, other bands that I see mm-hmm. and bands that actually make a living off merch, it's, like, it's laughable. So yeah. it takes a while to get there. Yep. Um, so that's the one thing that is an issue because if your if your fan base is so small, you're limited on who you can sell merch to. So we could drop a hundred dollars on a merch drop, and sometimes you it's losing money. Sometimes yeah. you only sell two shirts. Sometimes you sell no shirts. Sometimes you could sh- sell ten shirts, but mm-hmm. it just depends. Meanwhile, if you put that same hundred dollars into a bigger band's merch drop, it's like, whoa, we just sold a hundred shirts. We just dollar per shirt or less. Cool. Yeah. Um, so it just it drastically varies in in that sense. It's a it's a barrier to entry thing, right? It's it costs more to buy a T-shirt than it does to watch a video. It costs three minutes of your time to watch yeah. a video. We yeah, have plenty exactly. of time, and it costs twenty of my dollars. That's six of my hours or whatever. How many yeah. hours that equates to? Um, that's hopefully not six hours of work, but whatever the, yeah, the time yeah. would be. Um, but it is interesting, and I, it triggers my brain. Like that's also then why TikTok is so successful in getting people to watch music videos, Definitely. right? It's like we've shortened the video to a 10 second thing that can be to more people. Yep. And it's one of those like, yeah, how do we keep milking that principle and getting more people in and playing this game? Cause like that, yeah, that is a tried and true strategy. That's the, yeah. the bracelets that I were mean, so popular in 2010. Like uh, the oh, bracelets yeah. are a way to get you to the merch table and you're just spending a dollar. Like the, the, the bracelets didn't p- get paid anyone's gas money. I'm assuming um, compared yeah. to t-shirts. But, like, once you are there spending those $2, Gee, actually, you're there. I just had to rack my brain to, like, think about what you were talking about. And I just now remember. Like, that was, like, a memory that you just unlocked. Because I definitely have. I'm pretty sure I have, like. You're talking about the black the ones two with inch the white brace. fucking yeah, yeah, text. Yeah, yeah, yep. Though, dude, I forgot about those. Yep. I, I definitely have. 
I know I have like a Bless the Fall one in my yep. house, and I know I have. I saw. Um, I can't remember the other one. Uh, Chris Rowetter from like Master Flames yeah. posted like a, a photo of him outside like a U-Haul or some like storage unit. Like, look what I just found, and I had the same thing. Like, oh fuck, I forgot about yeah. those. But it struck me as like, oh, that's a that's. It stuck on as a trend, but the reason the trend was so successful is because of how valuable that is in selling merch. At Warp Tour, it's like it's hard to get someone to come up and spend twenty dollars. It's easy to come buy one dollar. Oh, and once you're there with your wallet out, it's so much easier to buy a t-shirt. So it's like True, how do we yeah. keep getting people in the door and keep play, like making things smaller? And I guess there's a diminishing return there of like, yeah, I don't want to just be sending screenshots of the music video out and hoping that that is accessible. Um, yeah. I mean but, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. You yeah. Know, if, like, I don't know. Like the the like live photos thing is like the I mean it's cool, mm -hmm. but that's like the uh, I don't know the I can't think of the word. That's the like relic. the fallback if yeah. like you don't have anything if your band's not fucking doing anything for two weeks and you don't want to be like shit, I don't want to not post for two weeks. Let's just post up a couple live photos and figure mm -hmm. out captions. Like that's that's like the cop out. But it's cool. Like you yeah. people want to see those too yeah. though. It's it's it's, it's not, better than posting nothing for sure. Exactly. Like, yeah. Um, it's not, I'm not saying it's bad to post that, yeah. but, um, but it's not video content. It's, it's not also something that like, is... if you're a smaller band like us, like I don't even like I social media is my literal job and I don't even like our social media. Like mm -hmm. I'm like bad at it. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. I do uh, the ad stuff's cool, but the ad stuff's different. That's totally different than like posting every mm -hmm. day and like yeah. doing all that. Like I do do that for some pages and, and also my own page. Um, but I really sometimes have to rack my brain, like, God, what am I going to post? Like, I don't know what to do. I don't want to fall off the face of the earth for a month straight. Hmm. Sometimes it happens anyways. Like, yeah. Um, the the podcast has been, like, strangely helpful for me with that. It's like it forces me to post yeah. something every week. And then because go week. I'm then aware it's of, fine. like, if I don't post anything creative, then my whole page is just going to be me talking to my friends, which isn't bad. I like that. But then it's not a I good representation you. of what my interests will find are. your profile and be like, well, wait, is this a music uh, video guy or podcast so guy? So it's been a great you, motivation yeah. of, like, keep posting. And it's allowed me to – it's given me like, almost like create a freedom of, like, I used to be nervous about the post because it's like, oh, this is going to be my representation for the next week, yeah. two weeks, whatever. It better be the right thing. And now it's like, nah, just keep throwing which, stuff out. That's actually funny, too. That for bands, I feel like, yes, you should post. Definitely. Also, though, there's two, actually two things, two thoughts on that. One, it's big in, like, alternative music and, like, indie music and, like, that is, like, bands. I'll go and I'll look and I'll find a new band. And they're, like, an alt band or, like, an alt pop band. And I'm like, boy, this is really sick. I'll find their Instagram and they have fucking, like, six posts and they're all two months apart and they just don't fucking post. And they're somehow just fucking gigantic. Mm -hmm. And they just don't give a shit. That's great. I love that. Yeah. I wish I could do that. <coughs> um, then the other thing is with me personally, lately, it has been the opposite. Because I would put I post a lot. I like my I don't I don't like Facebook. And I use Instagram probably the most. So I will, you know, filter. I don't try to my Instagram is pretty personal and like ban shit, but I still filter in the work stuff because I, you know. A lot it's of band important. people follow me on there, too, so yeah. I will post on there. But my Facebook is, like, I don't give a shit about Facebook, so I'm just dedicated that to my job. Like, anything I post on Facebook is either the band or ad shit or, like, yeah. management shit. Like, only that. Like, you will struggle to scroll through my thing and find anything else. Um, yeah. And lately, it has been whenever I post, I just get too blown up, and which is a good problem to have. But now lately, like, I'm trying to figure out what to do because I have, like, I could have made five posts this week and I didn't because I don't know what the fuck to do because at this moment, it's, like, overwhelming. So I have to, like, yeah. now figure out, cool, am I going to only post? Instead of making four separate posts for these four separate bands that I worked on this week that they all did well, I want to post up these results. If I do that four different days... I'm going to be spending my entire day like this yeah, and be miserable and like, yeah. could I maybe b book out fucking four months of work in advance? Maybe, but that's not really how it works. Usually it's people like, yo, dude, my song's coming out tomorrow. Can you do it? And I have 12 people send me that DM and I'm like, dude, I physically can't do this. Like yeah. that is, I would love to be, if I could pause time yeah. and do this and make a ridiculous amount of money in this in the next 48 hours that'd be yeah. so sick but i can't yeah and so some shit like lately has been kind of like 
I don't ignore people, but like if you don't respond to someone's, if you go a few days sometimes without responding to someone's DM, like the notification goes away. So like this month, like last month was my most successful month like ever. Hell yeah, congratulations. Which is sick. sick, thank yeah. you. Which I'm not trying to like brag. No, or no, anything, no, yeah. But I'm just saying as so an I think example, it's important to share milestones. Yeah, yeah. Please, yeah. So like last June was like really, really, really good for me. I like beat out every other month. Hell yeah. But shit did fall. Like there were definitely things that fell through the cracks. Like, and I don't, I, I can't think of the specifics. Sure. I just know yeah. it happened because yeah. I was talking to so many people and I went on vacation. So half of it was like, I took a vacation for myself. Mm-hmm. I needed a little break. Took yep. six days off. Hell yeah. But as much as the vacation was great and I would do it again, that fucking week before was hell on earth. And the t- ever since I've been back, like <laughs> this week was fine, but the first couple weeks since I was back, yeah. all, all these people, because I just let shit linger for like five days while I was gone. Mm-hmm. I, I tried to respond to people, but I would just be like, yo, dude, I'll, I'll be back this week. Yeah. Like hit me up next week. And then all those people plus new people are hitting me up mm-hmm. and I'm trying to manage everything. And then also the shit I already had booked because I basically booked my whole month out in advance. And I want to I want to try to start doing that too, mm-hmm. which I don't know how to. Like, yeah. it's difficult. I'm trying to figure it out. So I don't know. Now it's kind of a shit show. Now I'm like, all right, I'm probably just gonna make one big post every week where I'm like, here's some cool shit I did. Please don't blow me up. <laughs> I need. Or if you do blow me up, please blow me up for things that are in like four weeks. Yeah. And not, yo, dude, the song is out right now. Yep. Can we get this going? And I have to be like, dude, I don't know what to tell you. Like, I need you need week, an assistant. I need weeks of time, dude. No, I can't. <laughs> no, I I'm like very adamant about not having anyone else relying on me for anything. You're I need, gonna need it for scale pretty soon. No, fuck that. I'm not. <laughs> I'm just not gonna do it. Just not. I'm just gonna cap your income with bullshit. See that? Then that's the weird thing. Because then yeah. it's like I want to raise my. I want. Would like to raise my rates. That'd be of sick. Course, yeah. Making more money is always sick. But I also don't want to price out. Yeah. You know, a lot of times, dude. It's like good bands just you know just have don't have the financial situation, which I could make exceptions. But then it's weird because then it's like, like it's I feel messy. bad because like yeah. oh I'm charging this band X amount of money. Meanwhile, this other band's coming to me and I'm charging them less just because I like it, which. In theory, it makes sense because I want to work on things that I like, but it also makes me feel like shit because I'm like, mm-hmm. I would be like, that's not what I do. But yeah. if I were to do that, I would be like, damn, like I'm not, this playing field is not even right now. Like yeah. I'm, I'm. And then what are you basing that off of? Yeah, it's the quality of music, the quality of the person. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Which yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. I, it gets so messy. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, I don't. I would rather not do that. Like, yep. I'm just trying to keep shit fair. But yeah. Who knows? Hell yeah, dude. Well, we're at our we're at our good hour. Did we do um, it? We still haven't talked about how you learned guitar or any getting into music. That's first so bands. funny. So at some point, that's it's funny that like that's been the crux of most of the episodes on this show. And we just end up bullshit. And time. you've been here three times, and we haven't even begun to start figuring that out. Um, something to look forward to. <laughs> something to get done that's in six months funny. when you come back. Yeah, I don't even I don't even know if there's that much to say about that. Though, um, honestly, like, well, I don't save think it, dude. Don't spoil it. <laughs> yeah, the next podcast is just gonna be fuck, like you'll have me back in another six <laughs> months. It's just like boring it's just fucking shitty hell yeah it's just me being like so yeah like i was in middle school and like please that's what i've been hoping to, to i wanted i played the fucking you know i played guitar hero and then i and then i was like oh this is cool. even jack's done with you if i can't yeah, came like, in and told you to shut sucks. up dude <laughs> yo i appreciate you coming through uh insatiable july 13th uh music videos out july 13th on youtube uh 14th song streaming everywhere um you should listen to it or else I don't know. Don't listen or else to it. I'm gonna quit. Yeah. Everything. Um, if you're hearing this, I guess the trailer's already out. The video's not yet out. So go watch that. I assume it's on your Instagram. Probably. Probably somewhere. I assume it's probably pretty easy to find. Yeah. I feel like it can't be too we'll hard. Figure. It'll be. It'll um, be somewhere. Hell yeah, dude. Uh, where one? Where should What's people up, find dude? you online? And two, uh, if someone has a song, like, uh, when is like the right time to hit you up? So like, if if I want you to do a song. If I want you to do a song, yeah. am I hitting you up now to start in three months? Am I hitting you up now to start next week? Like, yeah, where do I find you? And then if I want you to, like, <laughs> do a song for me, I mean, if you're, uh, what, should I, what should I plan for? Bands don't, I mean, newer bands don't know this, but most bands distribute their songs and have their release date, you know, at least one to two months ahead of time. Okay. So if you have that date, that's not changing because you distributed your song. That's the day it's coming out. Yeah. So as soon as you know that date, Hit me up and I will make it happen. Copy. Um, so we're in July. So if you have anything coming up before September, like don't even bother right now. <laughs> I, no, well, I mean I don't have that much for like 
August, I have stuff booked in August, but it's not crazy. Okay. But like this month is like fucked right now. You know what I mean? So it's Bye, like, <laughs> um, it just depends. I okay. mean, usually two, three weeks is like enough time. Okay. Like more than enough. Even, even, I don't know. I still will take on the things that are like, yo, my shit's coming out in two days. Can you help me? Like if I have time, if I, if it's possible or if it's real, like that's, if it is really sick, I'll sometimes be like, all right, I do want to do this. Like, yeah. I'll do it. Hell yeah. I don't know. Uh, where is the best place for people to contact you? Where do you hope they reach out to you? Uh, Instagram's cool. Instagram. You got to get an email. You got to separate email. business I do from have life. a management email, but okay. like, I don't like to... I really only give that out. Like, One, I don't like doing this stuff over email. Okay. All the management stuff's easy to do over email. Yeah. Um, this is like requires a lot of back and forth and like talking to people for a lot of time. So I don't like to do it over email just because email is kind of like slow. Mm -hmm. So I would just either someone will DM me on Instagram or DM me on Facebook or Twitter or whatever. And then either we'll just talk on there. I'll give them my number. Like, I don't really care. Um, I keep things as casual as possible. Cool. Instagram uh, at Jason Grandel, mm -hmm. I think. Hell yeah, dude. I see what's in the description. But cool. Appreciate you coming through. Mission accomplished. Mission accomplished, baby. Any last words before I hit the big red button? I know you got something good cooking in that head. Dude, I don't have anything cooking. My brain is...